When we first met Amable, his home life was really, really difficult. So at a very young age, he endured a lot of abuse by family members, by grandparents. He has one story where he was actually hung upside down, basically on a telephone pole, and left there. When kids like Amable have a bad home life, they often think that going to the streets is the better option, that maybe there they'll be able to survive, fend for themselves, and they actually choose to go. Amable was attending a day center for boys on the streets. So Amable would basically go every day, he would engage in their programs, and then he was going to still sleep on the streets at night. Amable is just one of those boys that home life was never gonna change though. So he really needed a longer term sleeping situation that could actually change his life. Otherwise, he was just going to the streets and getting more trauma, more abuse. We immediately found that he had a eye condition, so he needed some eye care and then he needed glasses. Immediately getting that, it was like his world changed. And then he enrolls in school and we end up finding out that he is incredibly intelligent. Amable is number one in his class right now and he's in the equivalent of third grade. So sometimes we actually will let him teach the first and second graders. Our teacher even calls him doctor sometimes. His name in Kinderwanda actually means worthy to be loved. And when I think of Amable, I am just in awe of how God brought him to us, how, how much he's healing, how much he's growing. And I think all of our staff looks at him and is like, you're gonna do amazing things with your life. Sometimes, the hard part is knowing that there's more than 7,000, just like Amable, that they all have incredible potential to do something with their lives, but if they're not given access to that opportunity, it goes untouched. We reached a point in this last year that our house was full of healed, healthy boys who are doing amazing in school, and then we kind of just sat back for a little bit. We had a little season of rest. And then we were kind of like, God, what do you want us to do? And boys started showing up at our house. 10 year olds, 11 year olds, they started finding their way to Hope for Life. And they were, you know, living on the streets, sick, hungry, needing access to education. And we already had a full house. Um, but I think this was God's way of saying, you guys are doing what I'm asking you to do and you're doing it well and it's time to think bigger. We want to be able to give more housing spots to boys that are homeless currently. We want to expand our program so we would have anywhere between 60 and 70 boys that we work with instead of the 30 right now. As a ministry we wouldn't be able to do what we do without people partnering with us and we might be the hands over there, but we need people behind us. And the work wouldn't get done without people here. It wouldn't. We don't have the resources there. And while it might just seem like writing a check, it's not. It's making all of what we do over there possible. And I, I'm just so grateful for, for Chapel Street because to think about the kids and what they need over there and then to not know where it's coming from. And then I come back here and I get people saying, what do you need? <laughs> and then you just cry because <laughs> you have prayed about this over there. And then to see it answered here, it's a gift. I, and I, I just hope that people can understand that this means the world to people. It does. You're changing the trajectory of lives and it, and it matters. Mm -hmm.